And we are officially live. We are back on and ready to rock and roll. What's up? It's Mike Wall, and welcome to another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast, where we deconstruct some of the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so that they can build a sustainable, <laughs> profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. I'm really excited today because I got my man, John Wilcher. Uh, this is a, 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 a man who's built a $20 million business um, off working with people who already know, like, and trust him. And uh, I, I'm just going to assume that he likes them as well. So um, why don't we dive right in? John, welcome to the show, man. How are you? Appreciate you having me, man. I, I'm a big fan of the podcast. I've listened to every one of them. To be able to share this from the with the guys that you've had on there from Al, to Kyle Whistle, to uh, to Jay, uh, it, it's an honor to be here. I, I feel like uh, I'm not quite at that level. I am on the way. You're on your way, brother. But, uh, but to be here with that group is is humbling, and I'm honored to be here. So thank you. You're welcome, man. Well, we got so much to talk about with you, man, because you've got an interesting past. So why don't we just start off? Um, tell us a little bit about you and uh, your backstory and then how that transitioned into uh, being a real estate agent. Right. I, mean, I wish I had one of these really cool uh, entrepreneur things like Gary V or Kyle Wessel with uh, lemonade stands and, and the newspaper. <laughs> no, man. I mean, I grew up in a very, very small town in, uh, in Kentucky and I never had an entrepreneur or a sales uh, you know, gene in my body. I um, always wanted to be that Marine um, police officer type guy. Yeah, it's my dream for the Marine Corps. After the Marine Corps was uh, police department, I um, graduated with every um, every honor or every award that they had on graduation day. Lexington, Kentucky, quickly made it to a detective. Um, made the biggest crack cocaine arrest in the city's history at that time. Did one year undercover with the DEA. Was just an insanely amount of fun. Got done with that. Did a year undercover with U.S. Marshals. And then uh, went to, through some life changes, uh, divorce, and just got really burnt out on it. So after about seven years, I left that world, and I moved down to Florida in 2000. Actually, I'm celebrating my 19th anniversary this Fourth of July weekend. Nice. And like in real estate, or like in Florida, when you move to Florida, you get you do two things: you get your driver's license and you get your real estate license. <laughs> so um, that's what I did, right? Uh, and it's a really quick story from there. Uh, 2002, three, four, five, six, seven. It was great. And um, I learned how to sell, but I didn't learn how to run a business. Yeah. And um, there's a note saying when you point the finger at someone, there's three fingers pointing back at the real problem. And um, <laughs> I, would, uh, I would spend that commission check. It just uh, new houses, new cars, uh, new everything. And when 08 came, my daughter was three years old. My son was three months old. And my stay at home wife. And within six months, we were we were done. I was busted. And that's all on me. I was just over leveraged. And I was just completely stupid with my money. Yeah. So at 38 years old, I went back to the military. The Marine Corps wouldn't take me because I was old. So the yeah. Army took me uh, at 38 years old. So 38 years old, I went from making six figures, driving a brand new Lexus. Six months later, I was going to parade rest for 22-year-old drill sergeants saying, Grandpa, get over here. Uh, and take this toothbrush and go clean that head. Wow. So that was that was humbling to say the least. So I did my time uh, stationed in Germany. I did my 371 days in Afghanistan, not that I was counting. And then um, in 2012, I got back to society and I told my wife, I said, uh, I'll do whatever I need to to support the family, but I want to try, you know, that crazy ass career where we lost everything and there's no benefits or anything, right? So um, I did, and one sale became two, two became four, four became eight, and um, I'm humbled and I'm smart with my money, and uh, it's been an epic ride ever since I've got back, and um, I could go on about how that hockey puck is, has taken off with the amount of uh, production. Yeah. We can get to that because I'm very, very passionate about how I did it, but that's the backstory of how I got to back into real estate in 2012. Yeah, what a great story, man. And, um, you know, everybody's got a different story. And the great thing about most of us is we take so much uh, from our past. And so yeah. I'm curious, out of so many different um, experiences there, um, what are some of the lessons that still serve you today in your business? 
the ability to confront. I mean, if you can handle 371 days in Afghanistan, you can handle anything in life. Uh, if I can handle a domestic where the, uh, you know, the, the man's 325 pounds, he's a former wrestler and, you know, she's in the, you know, she's in the, she's in the kitchen with a knife. And if I can diffuse that situation, you can diffuse any buyer and seller out there. So the people skills and the ability to confront taken from the law enforcement career has greatly helped me in the aspect of sales. Most people, uh, you know, realtors, we don't have a problem with leads. We have a problem with the ability to confront someone after you've shown them property for four weekends straight. Most realtors don't have that ability to be able to confront and say, listen, this is this is the home for you. Uh, you tell me what you want. This is that home. Um, yeah. It's not it's not think time. It's decision time. And I have that ability to confront um, when most people don't have that ability to confront what's needed in sales. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the mindset second time around getting into the business? Because you talked about what, one of the things you said when we just started this conversation is that, you know, you weren't running a business. You had a job. Right. And you were just yeah. selling. It was just it was always about selling the next property and getting the next commission check and then how you were going to spend it. Right. So I'm curious, like when you when you when you got back and you decided to, to jump back into real estate, how are you approaching the business differently this time? This time was my um, my ability to be able to close, and with the confidence that I know, no matter how the economy is, no matter how no matter how the housing market is, I know I have the ability to reproduce what I'm doing. So, with that being said, in the past it was it was dumb luck. Two thousand two, three, four. I didn't have any sales skills. So after I got back in two thousand twelve, I drove. 43,000 miles on a Fiat in one year, and I closed $1.2 million in real estate. That's it. Mm -hmm. Filled out a form online for Grant Cardone's office. A guy named Todd Straw called me up in December, and he gave me the hard close in December. It was December 15th of 2012. And he gave me the hard close that I needed at Cardone University to be able to take my career to the next level. Yeah. And it was December you know, struggling, two kids, you know, that I didn't have, you know, I didn't have the money, but he gave me the hard close. And still today, that's the most important phone call of my life. Time sure. are very close. And the, to answer the question, I know I'm, I'm taking the long road here. No, you're good, man. To answer the question is now with the training and the development and programs like that, I know I have the ability to reproduce what I'm currently doing now. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like to me uh, this time around, you the, the first investment you made was in yourself. Absolutely. Right. Yes, you absolutely. started to make some money instead of spending it on, you know, Lexuses and, and material things is you start you started to, to, to invest in yourself and, and kind of grow. And, um, you know, now obviously you've built a nice little business for yourself. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll jump into that because I'm fascinated um, and a little bit jealous, to be honest with you, um, at the way you scaled your business. But first, you know, talk talk a little bit about, um, you know, when you when you set out the second time, what was your vision of how you would build this business? Like, wh where where were you going? Like, what was the road? Like, what was the destination? What did you? Where did you see yourself taking this? At first, it was just to survive. And when I was in the military, and it was late 2011, Germany, pen in hand. Retention officer standing above me saying, son, you need to pick up that pen. You need to sign that document. Time now. You're going to be unemployed. You're going to have no insurance. How are you going to provide for your family? And I always promised my daughter that life would not always be like this. And if you're a father, if you can imagine the deployments and the coming and the going. So when I came back, it was just to survive. It was up at four in the morning, in the gym at five, in the office by 630. And I would work around all the way to about nine or 10 in the evening. And when I would come home, my kids and wife were in bed, wake up and do it all over again. There would be six, seven days to where my family would not see me. So the back was proverbially against the wall. So to answer the question, at first it was just to please God, please God, let me survive. Yeah. Once I got that, um, that morphed into, um, it's not really healthy and it's not a popular topic, but it morphed into uh, ego, it it really served me really really well to see my numbers climb up like that, and I was approaching my my, my heroes, 
it became intoxicating to say, oh, whoa, I, I, I've built this with, you know, the self-development. And, oh, what, you know, if I'm good now, what could I do next year? And then what could I do next year and next year? So the mindset at first was, oh, my, just please, God, let me survive. But once I got a little taste of the success, it turned into a healthy ego that kept on pushing me and pushing me. You know, with the healthy ego, um, I've spent an insane amount of money to be around the right people. And I was lucky enough, um, Christmas of 2013, I believe it was, I flew up to New York City and I got to hang around with Frederick Eklund on Million Dollar Listing. Mm -hmm. And he showed us around. Was and that through Ryan Stuman? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, there's 20 of us uh, around the world, really. There's people from England and, and, and Australia. And I remember one thing he said. He said, there's two kind of agents in real estate. There's the kind that's motivated by the ego, and there's the kind that's motivated by the money. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was all about ego. And it served me well for a long time. And I've morphed, and I've, I've matured since then, and that's not as important. But it did serve me pretty well for a long time. Okay. At what point um, did you decide that you were going to build a business where you were just you wanted to tap into your sphere? In other words, you did you didn't want to scale something where you didn't have to you know make a ton of cold calls or work with people um, who you know ultimately you may not want to work with. When did you make that decision? January one of two thousand eighteen, and I woke up and I had had it to where. You know, the Internet leads and the follow ups and the, and the door knocking and the expireds. And I think it was Brian Buffini, um, longtime coach. He said, go shall go deep on a few instead of shallow on a bunch. Yeah. And I had a database of, you know, uh, thousands of, of, of people and I deleted several hundreds. And I went really deep on that sphere of influence that people that I've already closed in the past. Yeah. And really, really went deep on those. That took place January of 2018. And that was that was the game changer as well. I went from I think it was 11 million that year to, to 18 million that next year. OK, because, you know, I think on some level, everybody would like to do that. And, you know, there's there's a big myth out in our industry. Um, and I, I listened to a guy named Lars Hedenborg. He has a uh, a, a great podcast called the business building podcast or something to that effect. And anyway, um, he talks about, you know, talking to people who, you know, who do two, you know, three, $4 million in, in GCI, but they don't, they're not profitable. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, and they, make, it, they, they tout, you know, how many homes they, we sell over a thousand homes and it's like, it's always about that next deal, right? It's it's really, in, and to your point, I think when you talk about the ego and the money, I mean, th I guess those guys would really fit that profile of being all about the ego, right? They're all about, you know, what's on paper. But the reality of it is, as you get older um, or, or as you mature in this business, you realize that it's really only about one thing and it's about making a profit. Right. And and so for you, like some of the things that that I thought about for you is, you know, when you don't have to invest in lead generation, when you don't have to do some of these other things uh, and spend some of this other money, uh, really, when you're only investing in relationships, um, you know, you can be very profitable doing that. Uh, like you said, if you go deep on a few relationships to where you're creating raving fans and, and they're out singing your praises and, and your phone's ringing, number one is that your lead acquisition cost goes way down. I mean, way down. And number two is you're not competing on a lot of these appointments because, you know, somebody that they know, like, and trust has already referred you. And yeah. so you're just going to, they've already, they've already edified you. And so you're yeah. just going into their living room, sitting down and they trust whatever you say. So is that kind of the way you wanted to design this? I think, I mean, I couldn't imagine anybody that would not want that way. That wouldn't want that business. Now, I don't have a listing um, presentation. I don't have I mean, I handwrite before I go in what I have in mind for a marketing plan. I handwrite out why, why John Wiltshire and a couple other things. I take comparables, of course, and comparable properties. But I, I've already got that listing by the time I go in there. You know, hey, John, I got a referral for you. And then they'll call me. Hey, my name's Michael. Uh, Dom referred me. Um, can you when can you come out and, and take a look at our home? So. Unless I'm, uh, unless I'm a buffoon or a pompous windbag, I've got that, you know, I've got that listing before I even get there. So it's nice to go in there and not have to compete. Now, I do love to compete. And there's stuff 
and things that I do that I don't have it before I get in there. But to go back to right before you asked that question, last week I drove up to Orlando and spoke with five other panelists in front of 200, maybe 250 of Orlando's top producing realtors. And I was the only single agent there. And everyone else is doing uh, 20, 30, and 40 million with teams of five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. And with that, you know, with, with the amount of money that you're taking home, this doesn't come from ego, but I, I can't imagine that I could be beat when it comes to a profit and loss statement with the wife that works with me. She's licensed. She works about two hours a day. Transaction management is this escrow made, puts the lockbox on, hangs the signs for me, et cetera. Um, when I'm out doing what I need to do, I, I can't fathom someone that's got a better profitable business than what we've got. Now, we're, we won't grow on, a, on an epic level, but um, just from sphere of influence with a marketing budget of zero from 2012 until today, our numbers are up 1900%. Yeah. So I just think it's, I mean, it's just my, I'm not saying my way is the right way, but it's the right way for me. It's the right way for you. And honestly, like I, I, I commend you for that because now it's less about the ego and more about the profit. Sure. And, and so like most people, most agents, especially when you just start your journey as a team leader and you start to grow a team is you, you get caught up in this whirlwind of growth and yeah. then you're just growing for the sake of growth. Yeah. And at, on some level, you know, you, you grow past a, a stage of where you were really profitable. Yeah. And you're just adding things to add them. And typically what happens is you're not holding those things accountable to getting a return, right? You, yeah. So you, you understand this, the, the structure of a real estate team might include contract management, listing management, marketing, um, ISAs, uh, buyer's agents, showing agents, listing agents, um, you know, you, you name it. And, and then, you, and then you're, and then you've hired a, a director of operations, right? And yeah. you've got all these pieces in place, but you 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 don't have you don't have the systems in place to hold those things accountable to make sure you're getting a return. Uh, and while it looks good on paper, and you get to tell all your, the other real estate agents how you're selling a thousand houses a year, and you know your gross commission is three point six million dollars. Right. At the end of the day, you know you're 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 taking home maybe your salary and maybe losing a little money. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, there's a guy in my market that I greatly respect, and I really look up to this guy. And we went to lunch about about a month ago, comparing this and comparing that. And you know, I, I did take a look at what I my numbers, um, and my numbers were more than his entire his entire office. And he's got an office of maybe, uh, maybe 10 people. And he told me his break even point is a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> said, you know what? Yeah. Office space, copier leases, two assistants, marketing this, inside sales, that, 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 that. Yeah. His break even point is 250 grand. I just, I, I can't fathom that. And, and again, he, he runs a great business. I respect him more than probably just about anybody in, in my local market. But that, that's his way, but it's just not my way. I can't imagine working, you know, for a portion of the year to say, oh, whew, okay, I, I broke even. Now now let's make some money, you know? Yeah, yeah. So your database is essentially your gold mine. What are you doing to to market to and stay in touch with your database? What what kind of tips can you give people that are watching today if they wanted to, to shift, make a shift in their business to do more SOI? Man, it's nothing sexy. It's just old school Handwritten notes for birthdays and anniversaries, wedding anniversaries and closing anniversaries. Birthdays, we'll get a $5 gift card from Starbucks. Every single time I'll get a text message, thank you so much for the Starbucks gift card. And then um, on their birthday, I'll send them a text. Hey, keep it very informal. Yo, homie. Hey, buddy. Uh, happy birthday. And then I'll send the wife. Hey, um, hey, hey Tiff, just um, want to say, uh, make sure you give Dom a big wet happy birthday kiss for me. Uh, most of the time they'll reply and, you know, ask me where they want me to give the kiss to. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's very informal. And then a lot of text messages. I do. Um, It's called a selfie video. If you take your phone and you hold it out and you record about one minute of a, of a message to say, hey, I was just thinking about you. Hey, happy birthday. Instead of doing this and typing it out, they get a video of you for one minute. Shows excitement, tonality. Hey, I was just thinking about you. That kind of thing. That goes over very well. Um, I do um, just basic, basic 
old school yeah. stuff. Yeah, it, it's there's nothing exciting about it. I mean, every uh, every day for about five minutes, maybe seven minutes, I feel like Jer- Jimmy Fallon on the Tonight Show with the handwritten notes. You yeah. know, and so it's nothing. It's nothing sexy. No. So are you are, are do you have these reminders set up in some sort of a database where it's like call Tiff today or text okay. Tiff or whatever? Absolutely, yeah. Just every morning I check my my, my database. It's the important dates and uh, again anniversaries and stuff like that. And then if I'm over by somebody's house, I'll uh, hey send a quick text. Hey, I was over there by by you know Wall Street or or, or, or Smith Street, just thinking of you. The house looked great. How's how's little Johnny? How's little Freddie doing? Just always stay on top of mind. So when they do hear someone at dinner or, or the public sh- checkout line or something like that, John is always, always on their mind. Yeah. And then, you know, that's why, that's why the referrals and the repeat are so strong. Yeah. So the way you have it set up then is you're keeping your database in some sort of a CRM and then scheduling reminders for um, important events like anniversaries, birthdays, holidays, uh, doing handwritten cards. And that's, that's the, that's the meat and potatoes. That's your lead generation time, right? You're not calling expired to for sale by owners. You're spending that time um, marketing to your database through different means. Now, are you connecting also with them, John, on social media? Oh yeah. Uh, Facebook organic has been very, very good to me. I'm averaging about two leads a week from that uh, on Facebook messenger friends to say, Hey, uh, we got a lot of expireds in our in our area right now. Market's changing just a little bit. It's a little stale compared to what it was. Mm-hmm. So I'm averaging about two two text messages or Facebook messages a week saying, "Hey, my friend Susie's uh, had her condo listed for a couple of months. Not happy with what they've got. Can you give them a call? I'll give them a call and go over there and, and, and get the and get the listing." So Facebook organic has been, I, it it could be twenty percent of my business right now. Yeah. And, Three posts a day in the morning is inspirational or motivational or gratitude. I'm grateful for this day, et cetera. Noonish is business. And then in the evening is something about family, something about the local community and things like that. So on the phone, every day pops up a reminder about seven or eight ish. I, I don't want, there's days I don't want to, yeah. but I'll make that motivational post. And then um, it stays top of mind for those three organic posts per day. Yeah. Wow. So you've got a great system worked out just for marketing to your database. Okay. And the, the, the cool thing is like, I think I'm probably at a point in my business and, and the funny, the, I guess the not so funny thing is that I wished I had start, started my business out doing more SOI. Yeah. I literally did not pay any attention to my sphere of influence. Oh, like, wow. I, mean, I was just, I called expireds. That's all I did. Right. Yeah. And I, and, 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 you know, I just started doing a lot of business that way. So that's all I knew. But um, we did start um, a few years back, uh, really start, we started doing more stuff with our database and st- certainly started picking that side of the business up. We're doing stuff with send out cards right now where our entire da- database is uploaded there. And, and then we, you know, so we send out brownies and stuff for their birthday and holidays and stuff like that. And trying to be more cognizant of getting um, uh, their social media information and connecting with them there as well. Right. But um, it's, it's a, it's a tough road to hoe if you do not, if your business is only predicated on um, on 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 expireds or for sale by owners or internet leads, right? It's, it's because everybody else is in that too. And if you yeah. don't have that component, um, that 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 SOI component, that sphere of influence, then um, you know y- your lead acquisition cost will stay steady. It will never go down. Um, in fact, it will probably go up because the cost of technology. Uh, to leverage technology is not getting any cheaper. And in fact, they're always adding new types of technologies for us to spend money on, right? Yeah. The shiny squirrel syndrome. Yeah. Uh, but if, if you can, if you can get, uh, if you can get to your database now, are you, are you doing any type of client appreciation parties or anything like that? I've heard of people doing stuff like that. I don't, we were discussing that in Orlando. Uh, I haven't done anything like that. Car washes seem to work very well. Um, ice cream socials and things like that. Yeah. Uh, haven't done anything like that yet. I, sh- I should. That's on the to do's, which is <laughs> you know a mile long. Yeah, I definitely would like to get into that. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's that thing that takes you to forty million. You know what I mean? That, right. that that's what's great about where you're at right now in your business is you've kind of you've designed it yourself to work it out the way you want to work it, and you know your your margins are nice. And you know it shouldn't be about having to double your business. You know I say that. Uh, more tongue in cheek, 
But, you know, the reality of it is as you add more things in, you're just organically going to do more business because of that. Right. Because your database is growing. Every time you close a new property, your database continues to grow. Right. And yeah, just a real quick success story. And we've all got them. But um, phone rang about two years ago from a local broker and he said he had a referral for me in a very affluent neighborhood in my area called Lakewood Ranch. I go list the property. And the reason why I got the phone call is his brokerage would not do a discount on the commission. So I took a haircut of 1%. So I got 2%. We brokered it out at five with three going to the other broker and I took two. And then two doors down, the neighbor found out they had been listed for a long time and I listed that one. And the average price point is 700,000. I'm on my eighth listing on that one street mm -hmm. as of today because this neighbor told this neighbor, told this neighbor, told this neighbor, and told this neighbor. So um, there's guys in my neighborhood or in my, in my market that spent about 10 grand per month on mailings for that neighborhood. Yeah. I've never sent out a mailing in my entire life. It's just word of mouth from this neighbor. They told, they told, it's, it, it's just spread real nicely. So, yeah. Yeah. So are you, is networking a component of your business? I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I like to stay in tight with, with the local realtors. I like to think the, the, the realtor is my number one customer and client. Yeah. Uh, why would I, you know, why would I market to one buyer when I can market it to a, a, a realtor that's got, two or three or 4,000 buyers in his database. So I do stay in tight uh, and I do try to have a good reputation and be very ethical to my fellow realtors. Yeah. As far as networking for um, social events, I, I'm, I'm, I don't even drink anymore, man. I'm married and I, I'm in bed by eight. So yeah. network is not my thing. I hear you, man. I hear you. I try to get in bed by like nine, nine 30, man. I'm, I, 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 cause I, I try to get up pretty early myself, but yeah. so like, Obviously, you 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 know you've gotten to uh, a point in your business where you know you're you're just north of twenty million bucks, um, mostly sphere of influence people you want to work with. What's on the horizon for you, man? Because you know obviously you just made the big move to EXP. Like, what are you uh, what are you looking to do next? Well, as seventeen years in the business, um, I don't want to be doing open houses uh, when I'm 55, 60, 65 years old. So as good as it is and as happy as I am, and I do love what I do and I am very good at what I do, um, there's got to be some change and there's got to be this uh, what next syndrome I've had for, for a while now. And I looked at EXP for a, a year, like most people have. And mm -hmm. the first time I looked at it, I'm like, absolutely not. That's not me. Uh, I'm good. And then I once, uh, what's the saying? Once you see it, you can't, you can't, see it. It, right. Yeah. So um, I looked at it a lot. And for me, uh, it's an amazing story. It, it, there was there was uh, there was a missing piece of, of the puzzle. The puzzle was done, but there was one piece missing. And I went to Orlando to the convention. I'm almost positive I saw you there. Did I see you there? I think you did. Yeah, I, I wanted to say something. You, you look when I saw you. You looked familiar, man. There was a million people there, though. It was. For me, it was the missing pieces. Was talking and having reality on it. There's three. Um, there's three aspects to where it hinders us from from learning something, and one of them is. It's what's called lack of mass. And, and as you can tell, I'm, I'm very passionate about my self-development. And I have learned that there's things that happen that there's a reason why we can't learn something. So these people and my, and my guy was trying to instruct me on the EXP thing, but I didn't have any mass on it, which means there's no one in my market that's doing it that I could talk to, that I could that I could see it, right? Yeah. In Orlando, I talked to countless people that are doing it, doing it well. One guy closed two Remax offices and walked, I mean, wrote, wrote a check for 78000 As you know, Mike Wall. No, not Mike Wall. I'm sorry. Um, there's one guy that wrote, uh, walked away from 97 listings from Century 21. Who's that? Yeah, that uh, that's yeah. Matt Smith, man. Yeah, Matt Smith. Uh, yeah. yeah, Missouri. Yeah. And, and then I talked to several people, and that was that missing piece in the puzzle that I needed in Orlando. So to answer the question, what is next? Um, I do. I, I, I enjoy speaking. I enjoy coaching. So I've got the opportunity to take 17 years worth of self-development in business. I've got uh, Cardone University to offer and several other programs to offer people, not only in my local market, but nationwide that I can yeah. help grow their business. I mean, when I was, you know, when I, for, 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 when I first got my license, nobody pecked me on the shoulder. Hey, let, 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 let's show you what, what to do. You know, don't make these mistakes. And back then no one would do that. Now I don't 
I mean, this is where I'll get a check mark in the, in, a, in a bad realtor column, but I've, I've made my rounds for the, for the brokerages. I, I wore the balloon. I did the KW thing. That's not training. That's not quality training, quality training like I have paid for. And then I would love to share to, to whoever, whoever wants the you know, wants the knowledge. Love it, man. Well, brother, I certainly appreciate you taking some time out of your day to spend some time educating our audience here. Um, is there anything that, that, that I didn't ask you that I should have? Good question. Um, no, I don't think so. It, it's it, my, my, my journey is very simple. It's just a one of pure self development. What you do prior to eight o'clock in the morning and what you do after eight o'clock at night is, is what will set you apart from, from other people. And I don't want to sit here and talk about, you know, quoting people all day long, but Jim Rome says your formal education will make you a living, but your self education will make you a fortune. Yeah. So I am only here right now um, in this market doing the way I'm doing and, and on this podcast with you because what I've, I've done for my self-development and that's it. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. So if um, if someone in our audience wants to connect with you, they have questions about building a, an amazing business where they can just work with people they want to work with and and uh, and their SOI um, or they have questions about why you joined EXP or why they should join EXP. How can they get in touch with you? Um, Facebook is John Wilcher, um, John at the Wilcher group dot com, the Wilcher group dot com. Just put in John Wilcher in Google and you'll, you'll find me. Man, John, you're truly living a life by design. And I think there's a part of us that would all love to run a business where we weren't competing with people or competing on listings and working with people we respected. Um, as always, I just love sharing these stories um, because I know EXP is literally changing agents' financial lives, my own included. Do me a big favor. If you know someone who might enjoy the podcast, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and smash that subscribe button. If you want to learn more about EXP and why it's the fastest growing real estate company in the country or you're just interested in growing your business, head on over to explodingwealth.com. And if you want to jump on a call with me and learn more about my business, go to meetmikewall.com. And that is it for this one, folks. Mike, appreciate it, man. Looking forward to meeting you soon. Absolutely, brother. Have a good one. You too. You rocked it, man. Good job.